What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. In this video, gonna be giving you my impressions of Horizon Call of the Mountain. And if I have time afterwards, which I should, gonna just talk generally about PSVR 2 and my experience and my early impressions with it. I will give another dedicated video for PSVR 2 down the line when I have more time with it, when I've you know been able to experience it more extensively and when I played more games. Uh, but for right now, as I said, it's just an early impressions on both this game and PSVR 2. So let me put a minor disclaimer out there that I'm a I'm a VR noob, right? I have used other devices, VR devices prior to PSVR 2, but I've never owned one, never had PSVR 1, uh, never had an Oculus. Um, I did try the Oculus and PS, PSVR 1 at conventions, but as I said, never owned one. So um, if I lack the terminology or the understanding of certain things within VR games, you know I'm a noob at this. So Horizon Call of the Mountain is the only PlayStation first party game to launch uh, with PSVR 2, unless I'm forgetting something, I don't believe I am. And it's clearly the game that they believe represents the VR experience well. This is their best offering right now, uh, since it's bundled with PSVR 2. So getting into the game, um, one thing I, I do have to say is the core of a story is, is still here. Um, I guess I was assuming that because it's a VR game, they would just kind of throw story, dialogue, and you know conversation to the wayside. Um, but they haven't done that. Not saying that this is, you know, going to be um, an extensive story as the Horizon mainline series. You're not going to get that. But it's clear that they haven't just like completely forgotten their roots and just, you know, thrown that out the window. There's still good dialogue. There's still a story here. The story follows a character named Rias. He's a former Shadow Karja rebel. Uh, anybody who's played the Horizon main series, you know, knows about the different clans and tribes and everything like that. And he's sentenced uh, to atone for his crimes, which I believe they mentioned was murder. And he might be either wrongly accused or he did commit the crimes, but for valid reasons. So the story is going to explore that. So far, being about two or three hours in, the main mechanics of Horizon Call of the Mountain, including combat mechanics and outside of combat, is climbing, crafting, strafing, dodging, ducking, and everything that involves archery. I like that, you know, there's some things in this game that I didn't really expect. I didn't know they would necessarily, I mean, even though the mainline uh, series obviously has crafting, I guess I just, being someone who's never really experienced VR, I just kind of ex expected the least out, out of it. Um, so I had like my preconceived notions of, it was just gonna be very basic and very straightforward and not saying it's the most complex thing, but it's it, they offer more than you would expect. The game is linear, but it has multiple paths. For example, when I live streamed, I came to a fork in the road and on the left, it went to a path where you could go up a mountain and battle glint hawks. But if you go right, there was a cave full of watchers and it was actually a stealth segment. So that was pretty interesting. I didn't expect that. Visually, this is a pretty good looking VR game to me. But once again, I don't really have much to compare it to. So I, I I mainly have to go off of my instincts and what other people have said who played like previous VR games, or the, whether it be the Quest or the, uh, or the PSVR 1. And I've seen comparisons video, for example, the, uh, the Star Wars, um, I think is the Edge of the Universe um, comparisons between PS... PSVR 1 or PS or Quest and PSVR 2 and they look like completely two different games. So the the PSVR 2 these these visuals definitely have taken a jump. But like as I said, I think the game looks looks, looks really good. Um but I don't really have much to reference Horizon Call of the Mountain Mountain against. Um I'm just going based off of my, what my mind tells me and what my instincts are telling me that it's a pretty good looking game. Certain things about VR and specifically Horizon, um, when you're doing things in VR, aren't intuitive to me yet. That could come from my inexperience. For example, when it comes to doing certain gestures, I get stuck on them, right? I'm following the prompt on the screen and I'm trying to, I'm trying to do exactly what, what they're doing. And I think that's what I'm doing, 
And I don't I don't know whether it's the game not recognizing that I'm doing it or I don't know if and I don't I don't know if it's just me not doing it right. Right. So it could be either one, like when I'm crafting an arrow or when I'm in front of a table and I need to make uh, the pickaxes and I'm trying to put the picks at pickaxes uh, together. I'm like, am, am I kind of slow or is this my inexperience or the game isn't reckon? You know, certain things just aren't completely intuitive and you kind of got to like trial and error and, and just, you know, experiment with it. So, you know, and, and I'm and I'm and I'm fine with that as long as it doesn't take take too damn long to figure it out. I have encountered some graphical bugs, for example, when I'm climbing the mountain and for some reason, my you could see your hands out in front of you, of course. And for some reason, I've climbed the mountain, but my hand is still all the way down the mountain for some reason. And I don't have use of my right hand. I had to climb up a mountain with only my left hand because my right hand is stuck down the mountain still for some reason. The game describes the character as like a climbing and archery expert. Put an emphasis on climbing. The game makes you do a lot of climbing. It is a lot of physical work, which I'm going to get into in just a little bit. I didn't expect it to be uh, to this extent. I think there's a bit too much climbing. I'm not saying it's not fun and, and enjoyable, but I obviously want to engage in the combat with, with the machines and, you know, perform archery more than just climbing a whole bunch of mountains. So even though I've had a generally short time with VR so, so far, there's been a lot of things I've learned and noticed and, and, and realized regarding VR. And I want to state these things um, for anybody who's thinking about um, getting into VR for the, for the first time, thinking about buying a PSVR 2. I think there's just some general things that you should know about it that, that I've learned and that, that I've even done research on. Um, VR, some of these games are gonna be a workout. You need to realize that. I'm talking about climbing some of these, and, and, and obviously, let's put it out there, it varies from game to game. You know, Horizon Call of the Mountain is seemingly going to be more physically intensive than most other games, right? But some of these games are, are gonna be a workout, and you're gonna get fatigued. And that may be a good thing. If you wanna lose weight, if you wanna, you know, get a little bit, bit of exercise in while playing games, and some people, that is some people's goal, you just got to be aware of that. You got to be aware of the game that you intend to buy in VR because you will get a workout. You will get tired and fatigued. Like I said, there were some at points playing Horizon. My arms were burning. Not joking. My arms were burning. OK, um, and you want to be in a cool environment like I've done research and read articles and seen what people have been uh, tweeting and everything like that. Talking about VR, most people they recommend that you have a fan on you while playing VR. Yes. You need a fan. I had to turn on my AC. I have like central air or whatever. I had to turn on the AC in the air, in, in the area where I was playing because you want to keep cool. Even with that, you're going to sweat. So you're going to have to clean your VR device. That's something that they recommend anyway to make sure you have the utmost clarity at all times. Um, you will have to clean the lens of your VR device. I keep a microfiber cloth around uh around my setup vr can be just tough on your body mentally and physically right because it's so stimulating it's stimulating everything you're you're it, it could be tough on your eyes it's stimulating all parts of your body especially if you're if you're moving and it's just visually very stimulating so that's why there, there's actually a, a a rule of thumb that if you play thir after you play 30 minutes you should take a break that varies from player to player um if you are susceptible susceptible to motion sickness you have to listen to your body you may have to take a lot of intermittent breaks the vr is not something where you can treat as regular flat screen or as some people call it pancake gaming shout out to asa from game on daily he calls it pancake gaming right because it's flat screen you can't play it like that you know how we we can play five six seven hours whatever amount of hours of just regular gaming you cannot do that in vr you will <laughs> it, you will hurt yourself you have to you have to be aware of that which is one of the reasons i guess why a lot of vr games tend to be on the shorter side like around five hours five six hours i think that's how long horizon call of the mountain is and that's oh that's okay right i don't i don't want to necessarily be playing a vr game um, even with taking breaks, I don't know if I want to play it 
for super long hours. So I, I like them on the shorter end. So for us who are susceptible to motion sickness, and I haven't really, I'm, I have been, like that's one of the reasons I avoided the first place in VR is because I got motion sickness, even though I played rigs. Um, it's recommended that you start out slow with a game that's not, that doesn't have too much motion, uh, too much motion going on. One of, one of the things I saw some recommend is th that you turn down the, uh, the sense of look sensitivity or whatever sensitivity they have in the VR game. You turn it down right off the bat because moving too fast, that's what can give you the, the motion sickness. And there's a whole bunch of tips and tricks out there to kind of fix your, your, you know, your, the possibility of getting motion sickness. And some people may not want to just even get into VR because it takes a little bit of preparation, I guess you could say. For one, you should play VR. This is all stuff that I've learned just in the last couple of days. You should play VR when you're feeling your best. I I played VR um, after I like after a full day of me doing stuff and I, either I was at work or I, or I was at home and doing other stuff and I played at the end of the day. That's when I'm like tired because I'm a morning person. So what I did was I tried VR early in the morning when I just got up, um, ate some breakfast. You know, I was hydrated. I was on a full stomach and everything like that. And that that's when I didn't feel its effects as harsh. I felt like, OK, like I, I could go like two, almost like two hours and, and feel kind of OK. So there are certain conditions where you should play these VR games is what I'm saying. Make sure you hydrate, make sure you eat, keep some water near you. If, if you're really uh, just vulnerable to motion sickness, um, some articles recommend Dramamine. You know, people use Dramamine when they're traveling on, on boats or in planes and they get motion sickness. Some, some VR gamers are passionate enough that they take Dramamine. Or there, there's even motion sickness wristbands that, have, uh, that apparently work really well. Um, and VR will never replace flat screen gaming. You gotta, you gotta look at it not as something that's supposed to be a primary way of gaming or or replacement. It's supposed to be just a different intermittent experience. That's how you got, gotta kind of kind of look at it. Because no, it's not necessarily the most ideal conditions. It's not as pick up and as play pick up and play as pancake gaming, right? So that's you, you just got to be aware of that and cognizant of that and accept that's what VR is. It's not supposed to replace our normal uh, way, way of gaming um, because there are all the things that I named that that comes with it. Uh, you know, cleaning your, your headset, you know, uh, pre preparing it. Uh, you know, you, you, you have to there's a sweet spot in VR with your VR headset uh, to get the most clarity. And sometimes, you know, that takes a good amount of adjusting, making sure you're the 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 uh, the band is all the way back on your neck and adjusting the lens and everything like that. So it's it's not necessarily just a super pick up and play thing. There is some preparation that comes before uh, some people may be OK with that. Some people may not be. There's some there's some cons and there's some pros, you know, with this experience. Um, but I'm I'm excited for it. I look forward to playing more Horizon. Look forward to playing more uh, VR games and seeing how different I, I feel with, with each one. Um, later on today, I plan to uh, live stream Pavlov VR. See what that experience is like. So yeah, that's my experience so far with um, Horizon Call of the Mountain and just VR in general. Hope this helps some people out. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I live stream or upload a video. Follow me on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.